We'll move on to Ohio. And, of course, the Bobcats, after Frank Solich retired, uh, did not do so well under Coach Tim Albin last year, uh, or Albin, however you want to say it. Went 3-9 and nine last year. 3-5 and five in the conference, so they lost all of their non-conference games. They, they looked putrid in a lot of them. A uh, big part of this was they were not explosive on offense, and their defense just gave up whatever anybody wanted at any point. Their their passing success rate on defense was number 122. That ain't good out of 130 teams. Um, they lost a ton of guys. Yep. Uh, quarterback Amari Rogers, uh, the running back Demontre Tuggle, wide receiver Cameron Odom, left tackle TJ Jackson, uh, Evans, the defensive end, Cox, the wide receiver. Uh, but they do have, you know, some top players for us to talk about. O'Shawn Allison, the running back, he is uh, he's coming back here. Linebacker Cannon Blouser, defensive tackle Rodney Matthews, and of course the quarterback Curtis Rourke. Um, that was Nathan Rourke's little brother. That's the one that everybody kind of thought was going to be the lead guy anyway, and and he did get a lot of play last year. This defense was awful. Their PPA margin was awful last year. Uh, net points per drive was awful, number 101 in the country. Turnover margin was number 116. They couldn't figure out what they wanted to do. And part of that might have been the fact that Frank Solich retired, you know, right before fall camp, really. I was about like to say, he, he, he left real or, uh, not early, real late, real late yeah. in, the, in the schedule. And that's, that's hard on a team, man. That's definitely harder on a new coach. Oh, especially. Uh, it, it, the offensive coordinator, Tim Albin, had been there for a long, long time. He knows that offense. He's been running Solich's thing for, I mean, well over a decade. But it's still difficult you know, to to bring that in and to let him kind of just make the, like, all the decisions, right? That's what's so That's tough right. about it. Um, two of the rushers are gone. We'll talk about the offense here. Uh, one of them is quarterback Armani Rogers. He was their third leading rusher. Um, or, sorry, he was their second leading rusher. The third leading rusher was quarterback Curtis Rourke. So you got to find a running back that's going to step up. I would imagine it's O'Shawn Allison. You know, we'll see. Uh, they ran the ball 58% of the time in 2021. Uh, are they going to open up the passing game to to create some more explosive plays? Um, it, you know what they'll what they'll want to do. They've got Rice transfer uh, August Petrie the third coming in, and I would imagine that he is going to be able to do something big this year for that offense. He, he should be able to allow them to open it up a little more on the defense. Uh, they did hire new defensive coordinator Spence Novinsky, who was at Miami of Ohio as the co DC and linebackers coach for the last four seasons. Uh, we saw what Miami of Ohio was capable of doing. Like he's he's a code DC there. He should know how that bunch operates. How quickly can he install that new defensive philosophy? Um, it centers around stopping the run, pressure in the quarterback. Miami was number fifty four in yards per rush defense last year. Number twenty four in sacks. Number eight in tackles for loss. They're going to be aggressive. I would imagine under the new guy, uh, linebackers. Like they appear set with uh, Bryce Houston, Cannon Blouser, but. Is there enough talent? Is there enough depth, um, you know, along the defensive line and the secondary in order for this bunch to be uh, successful? And I don't know the answer to that yet. Like, we'll we'll find out, I would imagine. Uh, keys to the season, for me, uh, defense needs to create more turnovers, actually slow down the opponent passing game, uh, and then the offense needs to create explosive plays and not turn the ball over. Like, this, this seems pretty cut and dry. Uh, don't get yourself beat. <laughs> what do you think about this bunch? Man, I think they're going to struggle. I uh, don't think they're going to be very good. I do think they'll take a step forward. I don't. I think they'll be more competitive in games that that even they might not win. But but I think, like I said, they'll, they'll be on the more competitive side of the ball of of, of the outcome of the game. I got them. I got them four and eight. That's exactly where eight. I've got them. <laughs> so I don't. Like I said, not 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 great. But I think they'll look better than they looked last year. I do think defensively they'll be better because they can't almost be worse. Yeah. Um, and uh, and offensively, so so here's what what I like about the the kid from Rice coming in. Their second leading rusher last year was their quarterback. They're going to have the ability to open things up because I think they got somebody who can throw the football with a little more accuracy. He's going to sit back in the pocket, find the open guy. Um. Where this goes to hell in a handbasket is if guys can't get open and he's not very accurate because he doesn't have the ability to run, 
it could get uglier. Well, no, he, he no, so he he can run. He's not uh, he's not Armani Rogers. Uh, well, but he's not Armani. You know. what, okay, that's what I'm trying to say. They're gonna. He, I don't think you're going to run the same offense as you ran last year because you don't have that kind of ability. You might be right about that. That's uh, you. You might be onto something there. I'm. I'm very curious about it because they they've got to do something to create some explosive plays here. Uh, yeah, but on the same thing, like I said, we talked about this. Like they often they, they also just can't be as bad on defense as they were. Like that's oh. that's almost mathematically impossible, and and so we just work under the assumption they're going to improve there. So yep. that that means they're going to be more competitive and they're going to be in more ball games, which should lead to more wins. It's a tough schedule, I them, though. I got, them, I got them one more win, but it's a tough schedule. Yeah. Me and you talked offline about this. I'll say this now. Um, I think the Mac was was instructed because I've never seen them do this before. They've always gone on the road to a big Power 5 school, gotten a check, and, and played in a big stadium, you know, once, maybe twice a season. Almost every one of these teams are doing it three times this year. And, yeah. and I think I think that comes from an administrative level of we're about to go get paid. These big schools are making a shitload of money, and it looks better on their resume to beat a MAC team than it does to beat an FCS school or, or, or somebody even lower, you know? Yeah. Maybe not lower than FCS, but lower than – you know, there are conferences out there that aren't nearly as good as the MAC. And, and let's go get us a check and help them get a little bit better win. I, uh, I, I, I think they agree. were instructed to do that because almost all of these teams have three of those big games on their schedule instead of two. And boy, man, that just – that's a hard field it's to swallow. Brutal. Yeah, it, with Ohio – That's, that's like, tough. They've got FAU coming in, uh, but I still think I'd that's see, a really I difficult think, one. I think, like, I'm about to say, I think that's a tough game. I don't think they're going to win that game. Yeah, FAU comes to Ohio, uh, but then they go to Penn State, they go to Iowa State – and then they play Fordham at home before they start off MAC play on the road at Kent State. Like it's That's right. now this isn't Washington, rough. Oklahoma, Georgia, but it's tough. It's tough. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE, at Chris B Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.